what is a mind? I'm saying that it is first and foremost something subjective. You can only be a mind. You can't see one. It's not a thing out there in the world. Now, um, that presents a problem. If you can only ever know a mind by being one, then how do you know whether anything else has a mind? There's a subjective aspect to everything, but does that mean everything's got a mind? There's a philosophy called panpsychism which claims something like this, which says the subjective aspect of everything is indeed the mind of everything. But how do we know whether that's right or not? How do we know whether everything has a mind? And if we don't, as I don't, believe that everything has a mind, even though everything has a subjective aspect, then how do we decide which things do and which things don't have minds? Some philosophers, in fact many philosophers, tell us you can't decide it. It's not possible. This is called the problem of other minds. The philosophical problem of other minds states that because the mind is something subjective, and therefore because you can only ever know your own, you can never, as a matter of principle, never know whether anything else has a mind. So I can't know whether you have a mind, ever, and you can't know whether I have one. I might be a figment of your imagination. This might be a dream, you might wake up from it soon and find that although you thought there was a thing out there in the world called Mark Solms with a mind speaking to you, in fact that wasn't really the case. There's a closely related problem in philosophy, uh, a closely related that is to the problem of other minds. That's called the qualia problem. Even if I grant that you do have a mind and you grant that I have one, we can never know whether what we experience is alike. To narrow it down to you know, one aspect of it, the quality of seeing the color red, for me, might be a quite a different experience from what the quality of seeing the color red is like for you. In fact, seeing for you might be what I would call hearing, or green for me might be what you would call red. We would never know. The, all the objective things about, for example, the color red, its wavelength properties, what it does to the rods and cones of your retina, what it does to the optic nerve, where it projects to in the occipital lobe of your brain and so on. All of these objective physics and physiologies of vision. Even if you understood all of that stuff, none of it would tell you what the experience, the quality of redness is like. This is the extent of the problem of other minds and the qualia problem. So, starting from all of this, think about this problem. We want to have a science of the mind. Psychology is the science of the mind. How do you do science on something like that? How do you do science which demands objectivity on something which is absolutely fundamentally subjective? How do you do science on something which only each one of us can observe our own? We can't ever point externally and say, there, that thing over there, I think this about it. What do you think? It is absolutely, in principle, impossible to do that with the mind, if, as I'm saying, the mind is something subjective. 